Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Ultimate Guide to Your Great Health. I am excited to get started on this. Thank you for being here in this webinar. Oh my gosh, look at everybody that's here. You guys are rock stars for being here. Okay, I'm going to do my best to answer the chats, but if I don't get to you, please email me at sue at suesalewellness.com. Okay, so I'm going to start sharing my screen right now. We are going to just get started. Okay, geez, this is exciting. Um, look at who is all in the house. It's really fun. Oh my gosh, I have Sandy, I have Sue, I have Sharon from Australia. Yay, how exciting is this? Okay, everybody, I'm just getting everything set up here and we will start. I know everybody's pretty busy and thank you for being here. So I just wanted to start out with, this is your ultimate guide to your great health. And I just am Sue Seal. And most of you guys know who I am. I am a practicing physical therapist of over 35 years. And I'm also an integrative nutritional health counselor and yoga instructor. And what I've noticed in the past is a lot of people are suffering right now. Um, not only because of what we've gone through as a nation, but just in general, people are struggling and striving so much these days. Yep, life is busy. And because life is busy, we tend to overlook taking care of ourselves. I get it. I've been there. I've been that busy mom. I've been that person working and managing in the clinics. I've done it. And I'm trying to help people right now understand that we can't keep doing this. Sometimes we forget what it may feel like to be healthy. Sometimes we just keep racing from day to day and trying to get everything done. I remember that was me. And sometimes symptoms of poor health just start to show up and you don't even realize it. Yep. I remember one day I just didn't feel good and I was so tired and I just laid down in pea gravel because I was exhausted. It doesn't have to be that way, guys. Okay. So... We know that we have to have a direction for any goal to work. If we don't have a direction, we're gonna go in circles. And um, you have to have a point that we're heading to. So I think that we all need to decide what our health means to us. What would the healthy you look like? Um, I know for a fact that I, think of health as having a strong immune system um, to avoid illness. I think of health as being able to walk up hills without shortness of breath. Um, maybe not for me, but a lot of people, it might be running a marathon or hiking a mountain or going to the top of Mount Rainier or just being able to play with your kids, play with your dogs, um, maybe even get up off the floor, or maybe it's just getting rid of medications that you're on. I want you to have a goal and I want us to walk towards it. If you have a goal in mind of what a healthy picture looks like to you, you're gonna be more successful on what you're trying to achieve right now. Because um, like I used to have pictures up of what I thought represented health for me. And I encourage you to do that. Now, once you've got that goal up, we have to think about why you're doing it. Okay. Um, my why, at a very young age, I lost my health. Um, I just kept traveling and doing and working and going and going and going and I never slowed down. And so little things started to happen. I started to get like endometriosis. I started to, to have irritable bowel syndrome. Um, I started to have digestive insults. Then the migraines hit. And then I started having joint pain and pa places that I just couldn't even understand while I was hurting. Um, so my why is my health. Um, at a young age was lost. And then also I've watched people that I love die at a very young age. My dad died, I think he was 58. My brother died when he was 58. And that doesn't have to be. So whatever's triggered your decision to burn the pounds or regain your health, spending time with your why is essential for strategizing and how to help stay motivated, stay motivated and to lose the weight. Once you've found your why for living a healthier life, the time to internalize it 
by writing it down. It's time to internalize it by writing it down. Um, we have to write down what we want to achieve. If we don't, we're walking in circles. Okay, let's take a real quick look at the chat box. Yes, Cindy is saying, a walking on the beach and climbing a mountain, play with the kids. That is something that she wants to enjoy. Um, okay, then. Yeah, ah, I like this. Okay, hey, I want to talk a little bit about um, one of the huge benefits of creating a healthier body that you're living in is to reduce your chances of developing metabolic syndrome. And what that is, is it's a cluster of factors that have, many Americans are suffering from right now, and they don't even realize that they are suffering from it. Over 40% um, of Americans have been diagnosed with some of these symptoms. So I'm gonna give you a little tiny, um, oh, kind of a lesson on metabolic syndrome, so we kinda of know what it is, because we laugh at this, really, but it's serious, because it decreases our immune system, it causes inflammation, it causes gut dys dysbiosis, and it causes our liver to start to fail, and it causes our heart to work harder. So let's just talk about what metabolic syndrome is. It's actually a group of risk factors that increase um, your risk of several diseases. So the risk factors um, that we consider when diagnosing metabolic syndrome, there only has to be three of these present, um, for it to be a positive diagnosis. Okay, so high blood pressure, high fasting triglycerides. The triglycerides are the end products of digestion and breaking down of the fats in food. We need the fats broken down so that our body can utilize the glucose for our brain and um, for metabolism and to have energy. A low HDL is a cholesterol, high density lipoprotein, AKA, AKA the good proteins and the good, or the good cholesterol. High fasting um, blood glucose. Okay, so when you have high blood sugar levels, your insulin is starting to become resistant and that causes us to work harder. Abdominal obesity. You know what everybody's talking about, that beer belly and we make fun of people that, well, I tease my husband all the time. We used to think it was a really funny thing to see all this, um, the big beer belly, the pot belly, but it's not. It's the first sign of your body starting to fail. Um, we want to boost our immunity against viruses by avoiding metabolic syndrome. Right now, more than ever, we need a strong immunity and a strong immune system to fight all the viruses that are in our areas and to stay healthy. There's been a lot of sadness this last year, and we need to get our immune system stronger. And one of the ways we do that is by avoiding um, the metabolic diseases that I've just li um, listed to you. Um, what does it look like? Okay, do you think possibly you could be suffering from it? A lot of people just don't realize that they are. Abdominal obesity or visceral fat is the most obvious clue to metabolic syndrome. Again, the risk factors tend to cluster and visceral fat, which wraps around the inside of the abdominal organs, causes insulin resistance. In fact, adipose tissue in an obese person is in itself insulin resistant and causes a further sequence of metabolic and inflammatory problems. So, okay, let's check the, let's check the chat. Does any one of you see yourself or a family member with a beer belly uh, yes, Anne can relate. Yep. Okay. That's kind of a scary thing, Anne. You know, we want to help our family be healthy. Um, avoiding long-term health issues by stopping a metabolic syndrome. Okay. The complications of untreated metabolic syndrome are frequently serious and long-term. Long For example, heart attacks and stroke. That is double the risk of people who do have metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome increases the risk of developing diabetes by five times. For someone that doesn't have it, that does have it. If you do develop diabetes, you may risk a, um, eye damage, nerve damage, kidney disease, amputation of limbs because we get peripheral neuropathy, we get a, in, um, an infection in our toe, there's a the healing process is low. And so what happens is sometimes we have to amputate. 
Um, it also leads to hardening of the arteries, kidney disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and peripheral artery disease. Basically, when your body is operating less than ideal conditions, like coping with high blood pressure or regulating inappropriate amounts of insulin, it doesn't have enough to fight um, and protect itself from outside viruses, germs, and bacteria. By now, you're probably wondering, well, what exactly is insulin, right? Everybody thinks, well, what is it, really? I mean, I hear it all the time, but what does it mean? Okay, insulin is a hormone that's made in your pancreas, and it helps you regulate the sugar that enters into the cells that can be used for energy. Normally, your digestive system breaks down the food you eat into sugar. I know, it kind of sounds confusing, right? But it has to do that because our cells operate off of sugar, fats, proteins, carbohydrates. Sugar is a carbohydrate. Okay, however, for people with insulin resistance, our cells do not respond normally to insulin and glucose can't enter the cell as easily. As a result, our blood sugar levels stay high because insulin's not able to break it down. And so as the sugar levels rise, even as your body churns out more and more insulin to try and lower the blood sugar, eventually the pancreas says, God, I'm sick of this job. I'm tired of it. I can't do anymore. And it wears out over time. And it may not be able to produce enough insulin to keep the sugar levels low. Okay. So research has shown that the immune cell that helps to safeguard the immune system are regulated by metabolic signals that receive that are received from insulin therefore if your insulin levels are not healthy your immune system won't work as well as it could what else makes us unhealthy inflammation explained here we go inflammation is our body's natural response to stress we need it in order to um, decrease infection, inflammate, and decrease um, trauma. So what happens is, think of, the, think of what happens when you hit your thumb. There's a lot of redness and swelling that goes to the area. Or let's say you scrape your knee. We, the body sends in white blood cells to help with fight infection, and it's a normal process, and we need this process to be healthy. But did you also know that inflammation can occur with inside your body, like in your gut, in your intestines, in your colon, near your heart? It also is um, in your muscles, your tendons, and your ligaments. And that's why people start to have a lot of arthritis as they get sicker and sicker. Inflammation is the primary cause of chronic pain, as well as autoimmune diseases. To combat inflammation, we need to eat a cleaner diet, cut back on sugar, because sugar feeds the inflammation, and be sure to stay active within our limits. We can combat inflammation by eating an anti-inflammatory diet. For much more information, um, I'm gonna have a class probably next week and you guys can all sign up for it. It's just a Facebook class. And what happens is we just go through slides within an hour. And you can uh, put in questions and I'll answer them. But it's just a little class. And so it'll be next week. And so just look for that on Sue Sale Wellness um, Facebook page. And um, I will be talking about anti-inflammatory foods and how to keep the body um, reduced in inflammation. Okay. I know. I've talked about metabolic disease and what it is. And I know that you've probably said, oh yeah, I've had a little bit of high blood pressure, but it's okay. Doctors are trying to put you on medication. Or, you know, your sweetheart has a little bit of that beer belly, right? But we're all trying to be in denial. And we don't realize that. Remember, you only need three of those symptoms, visceral fat, high blood pressure, um, and um, uh, high, high glucose or high blood sugar, right? Three of them. We only need three. So if you have three of them, we really need to start thinking about this. I know everybody's going to give me excuses about why they can't do it. Everybody has an excuse. I had an excuse until I had no, I had no other choice. So my big excuse was I didn't have time. I'm too busy with my kids, my house, my work, my life. Um, my job doesn't make it possible. 
I remember saying that I was too busy. I can't afford a healthy lifestyle. Um, and I don't, one of the ones that's really big is, you know what? You can't, um, you can't, oh golly, I hope I've been recording this. And I don't think that I have. I have been. <laughs> yay, I wanted it for everybody else. So yay, I'm so glad for me. <gasps> I was worried because everybody signed up for this and I just really wanted to have you guys. If you couldn't do it during your lunch hour, you can watch it later. So whew. boy, I don't like tech stuff. That's why I have my Joe. Okay. Okay, these excuses, we're gonna go back to the excuse. They're very common, but they're not real barriers, guys. And we can break these barriers. Typically what happens is reality is that we base our life around habits. And so, you know, that's a habit. I'm gonna race out the door to go to work, or we may be afraid to do something that's out of our comfort zone. Um, I personally know too many people that have waited to care for their body. Those people are no longer on the earth. And when our body stops, we have no place to live. You are responsible for your body. And you're also responsible for taking care of your body to be around in the future. That's huge, guys. It's huge. So the next step to your ultimate guide to health is being aware of the moment. Stop the mindless eating and self-destructive behaviors. We need to learn to be mindful and not let our fears, our ruminating thoughts, our inability to say no dictate our days. Mindfulness is the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where you are and what you are doing. We are always living in a state of engrossed and obsessive thoughts about something that's just happened or fretting about the future. It's not normal. It's normal, excuse me, but it's not healthy. The constant chatter in our mind affects the autonomic nervous system. So the autonomic nervous system has two pathways. It's stimulated automatically. It's either gonna fight, fight, or freeze, which causes us not to digest our food, which causes our heart rate to go up, which causes our blood, sh or our, our, our respiratory rate to go up, which causes us to not, not digest our food, or it goes into rest, and digest, which is the relaxation part of it. So we really want to stimulate the one that's good for us, but because of our lifestyle, we're not, we're in chronic stress. I want to share with you that um, I do have a signature program and I know this is a lot of information, but if you guys want to just dive into something and get all this information, you can. In my signature program, I talk about the autonomic nervous system and I give you ways to control um, the fight, flight or freeze with your breath, um, movement, uh, stimulation of the vagus nerve. Um, um, exercise, it's all there, but right now I'm trying to give you as much as I can in these little webinars. But if you get tired of waiting for the webinars, pop on over and see that. Um, okay, mindfulness techniques. Um, mindfulness can be practiced any time of the day from wherever you are. It is estimated that 95% of um, our behavior runs on autopilot. Uh, think about the times you're driving um, around and you get to your destination and you're there and you don't even remember the drive. Yeah. Um, that's not good guys. Mindfulness is the exact opposite of this. Here are some tips for practicing mindfulness. When you first wake up, take a deep breath and set your intentions for the day. How are you going to respond to maybe some challenging behaviors? How are you going to respond to happiness? How do you see yourself going through the day? Do you see yourself frustrated at everything? Or do you see yourself thinking, maybe this is where I'm supposed to be? or enjoying the smile that someone gives you. Think about how you're gonna react in your day. Also, when you're doing mundane activities like washing the dishes, rather than letting um, your thoughts take over and you're thinking about what you need to do tomorrow or what, how you're gonna get the clothes washed or whatever you're thinking about, focus on the task at hand. Get your senses involved. Feel the warm water on your hands. Look at the soap set, smell the, the, the fragrance of the soap. Think about how it feels to have a clean glass 
or a clean plate underneath your skin versus a dirty one. Be in the moment. Sometimes it's a really good idea, and I do this, I set an alarm, because sometimes I could just be going during the day and I don't even pay attention to what's happened, and I have to set an alarm, and then I tell myself I have to be mindful. Make getting healthy easy for you. Okay, so now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty of this. You kind of understand what can make you start losing your health, but now we're gonna start diving in. So take a moment to think what's in your refrigerator and pantry, okay? Are there sugary desserts, ice cream, Coke, Diet Coke, we'll talk more about that later, um, sugar-free products, is there sugar-free yogurt, sugar-free milk, I don't know, low-fat milk, look in your refrigerator, now look in your pantry, how about, are those healthy natural cereals that everybody talks about in there, is there Wheaties in there, is there cornflakes, is there, I don't know, all brand, check out what you have in your pantry, because we're going to really dive in pretty soon and find out that we have to be careful about what's in the pantry because we will gravitate to whatever's fast to eat. We want to fill our pantry with foods that nourish us. Okay, so we want whole, unprocessed. Anytime you see anything that says refined, um, enriched, that's bad, bad. Okay, they put stuff in and our body can't digest it, which causes inflammation, which causes us to go into, guess what? Metabolic syndrome. Okay. Um, we want to eat non-GMO. We don't want to eat things that have been sprayed to kill bugs from eating the food because guess what? It's an, it's an animal, right? And we are animals. So when we eat that processed food that has GMOs in it, it's affecting us. It's causing inflammation. And also... Things are sprayed with that. insecticides. That's also going to hurt us because we can't we can't break that stuff down. Body doesn't know how to do it. The liver says, "What is this?" Make getting healthy easy for you. Okay, seek out opportunities to move your body. My favorite way to move my body is I put my headset on and I go for a walk and I call a friend because I'm moving and I'm engaging in this social event. Those are two great things for health. We're faced with a dozen and dozen of um, choices every day. We can either choose to be healthy, we can choose to eat an apple versus a candy bar, we can choose to eat um, maybe a glass of water with lemon in it, or we could choose a Coke or a Diet Coke. We make choices every day. I want you to start reading your labels, okay? When it comes to what you're eating, if it's in a box or a microwavable bowl, or it's a can, it's loaded with preservatives and our body can't break down preservatives, it has added sugar and um, stuff to make it taste better. So you must read the package labels. And my trick is if I have to buy like a marinara that's in a jar, I wanna make sure that there's only six ingredients in that and I can pronounce every single one of them and I know what every single one of them is. That's a huge, huge, huge thing. Another trick is uh, staying hydrated. Our body needs water. It's made of 75% water. And when we're not drinking water, we're not detoxing. Because when we urinate, that's a form of detoxation. So water-rich foods that are really good to eat are fruits, vegetables, um, broth-based soups, oatmeal. High-fiber foods are good because we have to chew them. And they also give us a resistant starch that helps to lower and balance our blood sugar. Okay. When we're eating sugary foods, our blood sugars go up and down. But if we have something that has fiber in it, it doesn't allow our, our sugar levels to go up and down. Uh, fruits and vegetables are packed with essential vitamins and minerals your body needs. Um, and what that means is when it's essential is because our body can't produce it. We need those things given to us so our body's healthy. According to myplate.org, health benefits of a diet rich in fruits and veggies include a reduced risk for heart disease, including heart attacks and stroke, obesity, and type 2 diabetics, diabetes, which is metabolic syndrome symptoms, correct? Okay, protection against certain types of cancer when you're eating high fiber foods, lowers your blood sugar, and reduces risk of developing kidney stones, and helps decrease bone loss. 
So plant foods are also really rich in antioxidants and phytochemicals, um, which offer a host of benefits from anti-aging, right? We all want to look better and, de and disease prevention and protection. This is all around plant-based eating fiber. We need to feed our gut biome good probiotics. Um, and we'll go into this a little later in another class, but essentially probiotics are good, good bacteria in our gut that helps us digest our food. And a lot of people are talking about taking probiotics. And one of the things I'm gonna caution you about is if you've taken a series of probiotics, it's usually 28 days. Some people are on them all year long. I don't know if I agree with that, but I do agree with this. If you have had antibiotic treatment, have had some form of injury to your body and you've had, um, had to use a lot of pain medicine or NSAIDs, non-anti-inflammatory, um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines. If you constantly are eating something that's sugar-free and you're using a sugar substitute, sugar substitute like drinking Diet Coke, uh, drinking low-fat sugar or low-fat, um, low fat um, foods, that those things cause your bacteria in your gut to be harmed. And so that's when you'd wanna set yourself up with at least a 28 day cycle of probiotics. You also need to feed the probiotics that are in your gut because they're gonna help you um, digest your food, but you have to feed them with a prebiotic. And so we're going to have another lecture on that. And prebiotics are resistant starches. And so they take a long time for our body to break down. And therefore, it gets into our colon or our microbiome, our large intestine. And what happens is then it feeds those good gut bacteria. So we want to really watch what's happening because if we don't have good gut bacteria, there's a, a disproportionate level of yeasty bacteria in the body and as you know that craves sugar what do we do to make bread dough rise we put sugar on it so yeast will actually if you have a bad gut biome or if it's, it has too much sugar in it or too yeasty and then what happens is you crave sugar and you don't even you can't even stop craving it because they are hungry and they're going to tell your brain grab that donut and you're thinking you have the worst willpower in the world, but it's not that. It's because your good gut bacteria isn't doing its job because it's been hurt so badly. And what's happening is it is um, uh, weakened and the sugar yeast bacteria is consumed and it's too high. And so don't blame yourself when you want to grab that sugary donut if you've just had you know, antibiotic treatment or you've been on NSAIDs or you're drinking Diet Cokes and stuff like that because that will cause you to crave sugar. Okay, here we go. Okay, some tricks to feeding your body and helping it become stronger. Okay, when you're building a plate, try to make it half full of veggies. I know it sounds crazy, but people think that a veggie is a salad and they think, oh man, I did really good, I had a salad. No, that's not, that's lettuce. You need veggies like cauliflower, asparagus, artichoke hearts, um, broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts. Um, cabbage, that's vegetables, okay? When you are trying to lose weight, I have a policy or what I teach everybody is crowd out. Crowding out means eat things that are good for you first before you try and go to the things that you are create well, like you want, like a sugary treat. And don't beat yourself up if you're gonna have a sugary treat. That also causes problems with the autonomic nervous system, again. So, I always say crowd out. So I have a veggie plate while I'm cooking um, food and I have um, like a yogurt or a cottage cheese dip. So I'm getting protein, but I'm also getting my veggies before I'm even sitting down to the table. Then I might make a soup like a cabbage soup or a vegetable soup if it's in the winter or if it's in the summer, I may, might make the um, rainbow salad that I love. It has every single color of the rainbow in it, which means it's got red, purple, green, yellow, orange, and those are all different nutritious um, vegetables. Also, big one, eat the size that you wanna be. If you wanna weigh 130 pounds, put that size of food on your plate. I can guarantee you, you're eating to sustain the weight that you're at. 
So think about the last time you went with a friend that you think weighed 130 pounds, or I think about my son, I think, wow, his plate sure doesn't look as like my plate. Think about that. It's really kind of crazy when you realize you're feeding your body's weight. Stay hydrated. Okay. Portion control, we just talked about. I, I put everything on a smaller plate. Eat your breakfast. If you don't eat your breakfast, you're gonna crash. And your body's gonna say, oh my gosh, we're in, we're in a problem. And it's gonna release cortisol because cortisol tries to bring the blood sugar up so that we have it for our, our head. Our brain needs sugar. So then you start this sugar up and down, up and down. You need breakfast. And it needs to consist of a good protein, fiber, and good fat. I'm not talking, you know, Wesson oil or refined hydrogenated fats. I'm talking like maybe some a uh, little tiny bit of like avocado or some nuts or seeds. Now remember, when we talk about a fat, everybody goes, yeah, I had an avocado with this and this and this for breakfast this morning. It's not the whole avocado, guys. Fat that we need is about the size of our thumb. Okay, so like an eighth of an avocado is a serving of fat. Okay, just a real quick look at the chat. Um, Jordan says that what she has for breakfast is coffee. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Jordan, we're going to help you. Okay, so why do we go to fast food restaurants so often? <laughs> why do you think? Because they're fast and we're hungry and we're tired and we're grumpy and we want to get home. And we are lazy sometimes or we're just not lazy but tired. We're hungry. We don't want to go through meal prep. We don't want to go through doing stuff to have our food ready. So here we go. Be prepared. What I want you to start learning, and we're going to go through a meal prep. I think it's in September. Mm. Yeah, I think it's in September. We'll have a class about that. When we want food, we will grab the quickest form there is. If you are driving home with no dip plans for dinner, fast food, fast food will probably be your option. When you're tired, hungry, or even have an emotional eating event, for example, you're celebrating. You know, how many times have we gone to celebrate with food? Well, every birthday that I've ever had was a big celebration with sugar and cakes and candy. <coughs> Excuse me. We've taught ourselves that's an emotional trigger that in order to celebrate, we have to have food. So we have to figure out different ways to celebrate. You see what happens with emotional eating? So what I want you to start thinking about is stock your fridge with healthy prepared foods. Make it a habit to start prepping the food you eat for the week ahead of time. So some examples that I do is I do a veggie soup that lasts the week. I do mason jar salads. I cook extra protein for the week. I slice up my veggies and put them in mason jars and guess what? They don't rot in the bottom of the crisper because I can see all these beautiful little stacked up pretty little colorful veggies and I grab them as I'm hungry. Oh my gosh, maybe I'll grab some red peppers or maybe I'll grab some radishes. Or, oh, celery. I'll grab something instead of the fattening bad food. Um, I use high speed blenders to make my own dips. Like I said, cottage cheese and sour. Um, I use a cottage cheese base. I use a yogurt base. I'm even making my own yogurts. You should catch me on Instagram. I just did a yogurt, um, how to make yogurt super duper simple, not all confusing like the books show. <laughs> um, let's see. I make quinoa for a quick fiber and I eat it for breakfast. Sometimes I'll take my quinoa and I'll put some cilantro and black beans and avocado and tomato. And then I take some lime juice and I sprinkle it over a little bit of salt and pepper. Oh, so good. Huh. Sometimes I eat that for a snack. Um, let's see. For those sports nights that we're taking the kids to practice, have you ever done a freezer meal prep? We're gonna do that. Where we get everything in a bag, we freeze it and we pop it in our Instapot or our slow cooker. When we get home, it's all there, ready, boom. I don't know how many days I was teaching kids going to horses and volleyball and baseball and coming home starving and we'd grab potato chips or something gross. Ugh. Okay, so to, let's see, I think shop seasonally to save money. Okay. Okay, now here's some big ones. What else feeds us besides food? And I know you probably think I'm crazy with this, but I, I'm, I'm serious. Um, things that feed us foundationally are um, movement, relationships, social, 
mind, talk, and spirit, like how do we talk to ourselves, home, cooking, work and finance, career, environmental toxins, and then how our environment is around us, and sleep. And I'm going to give you an example of what happened to me. I was with a family member at the hospital, and I think I was there for probably 36 hours, and I really didn't eat anything. It was a really stressful time, and I was drinking water, right? And so when I went home, I jumped on the scales, and I thought I would have lost at least three or four pounds, but I gained four, right? I wasn't eating anything. But when our body is stressed, and any one of these foundational food groups, we go into the autonomic nervous system, which is turned on automatically, and we go into fight, flight, or freeze. And like I've said, fight, flight, or freeze does not allow you to digest your food. It increases your heart rate, it increases your respiratory, it makes all those organs work harder, causes stress on them, and causes us to become unhealthy. Okay, so this is just a really quick um, demonstration of the circle of life and what foundational foods are. So I want you to think of this like a spoke, okay? Each one of these are a spoke to like a wagon wheel or a bicycle spoke. And if you, I think I could do this. Okay, so let's say, if our hobbies, if let's say we've never taken any time to do our hobbies because we're just so busy with our kids and we're running around and we don't do that for self-care, that part of the spoke is going to be kind of down there. So this is a zero to 10. 10 is optimal right here and zero is here. So let's say we only do hobbies about, I don't know, five out of 10. Self-care, we, do, we don't do self-care at all. We go, oh gosh, I don't have time for that. I got to race out and take care of the kids, right? So that's about a three out of a 10. But now can you see if this was a wheel and right here, this spoke was that short and this spoke was that short. And let's say we have a cluttered home and we're not taking care of our home and we have no time for the home. So, you know, there's cobwebs all over because we're racing to work. We're racing to practices. We're racing to, I don't know, uh, soccer or horses or whatever it is and we're just not taking care of the home if that spoke is down now let's say when those spokes start to go down then our health starts to hit say wait what's happening here now when you're on with this is a if this is a bicycle wheel and you had spokes that were really bent down low could you imagine how that would really be a bumpy ride could you imagine how Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, here we are. We're at self care. We're just, we do not have health when that wheel isn't full. So that's why these all make a difference in our health. Okay, movement. Our body needs to move. You know, I can't say it enough. Um, I know it's hard to find the right time to move, but if you can just do little tiny things, like if you're most people trying to balance work and family and, um, trying to take care of yourself, it's kind of on the back burner. But if you could just do little things like uh, talk to your friends or, you know what, do a meeting while you're walking. Right now, it's pretty easy to do that, you know. Um, if you are watching TV, stand up during the commercials, do some squats, um, do mini workouts. Like I have um, some dumbbells sitting by my um place where I watch some TV. Not that I watch a lot of TV, but I use the dumbbells for my arms whenever I sit and have a commercial. Um, I love talking to my girlies on the phone while I'm walking. I take the stairs instead of elevators. Also, um, my mama taught me this. You know, she was 86 years old and she would say to me, I'm getting my exercises in. I said, well, what are you doing, mama? And she said, I'm walking up my stairs. I go, what do you do? She goes, I did six flights of stairs today. Well, you know, for an 86 year old woman, that was pretty awesome. So I started with 10 flights of steps and then that increased to 20. And so then I try at least three times a week to do 30 flights of stairs right here in my own house. I don't have to go anywhere, but I'm helping my body be healthy. Also, I like to dance. I turn on the music really loud. I don't think the neighbors like it very much, but I do it anyway. And I dance. I dance around like I was in the 1980s again, and I'm having fun at a high school band. I don't know. I do yoga, and those are all things that I do. Here's the deal. As a physical therapist, I've seen it. I've watched it. I've been there. If you don't use your body, you lose it. If you don't move your joints, you lose the range of motion. If you don't exercise your heart, your heart gets tired. It gets small. It doesn't pump the blood as accurately as it needs to. If you don't use your lungs, you're not going to be able to breathe when you're older. You have to move it or you lose it. If you don't 
practice balance, you're going to fall, break a hip. You've got to start practicing. Standing on one leg, standing on one leg while closing your eyes, all of these are things that help you with getting healthy and keeping your body moving. Okay, I'm not going to say this very much, but I just really want you guys to get off your butts because here's the deal. It is equated to smoking now because people are sitting 12 hours a day and this is what I know. There's a muscle called the iliopsoas, the psoas muscle, and it attaches to the lumbar spine. And then it attaches to the femur or your leg bone. And as we sit, if you can just imagine a muscle here to here, as we sit, this muscle gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And when that muscle gets tighter and tighter and tighter, we actually um, suffer from more stress. And the reason we suffer from more stress is because there's a snippet of that muscle that attaches to our, our diaphragm. And when it's attached to our diaphragm, what ends up happening is we can't breathe as well. And guess what that does? It stimulates the autonomic nervous system for fight, flight, or fear because we don't think we're getting enough oxygen. So, and we're, we need to stand upright because we're bent over and we need to stretch this muscle out all the time. I just need you, if you sit more than, you know, eight hours a day, if you sit five hours a day, I want you to try and decrease that by two to two hours a day. Get a stand up desk, stand up and do your stuff. We don't need to sit. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, so the, another foundational food group is um, your relationships, your career, your hobbies, your finances, your cooking and your home. All of those feed our souls, guys. You know, I used to have the hobby of doing painting and decorating. And then when my kids came, I stopped doing it all. And I needed that for health. Um, your relationships, you know, if you're not talking to your mate and uh, you don't have a good relationship with, um, you know, the people in your family, that affects your soul. It affects your health. Uh, career, you're there eight hours a day. Do you feel respected? Do you feel appreciated? Are you challenged? Okay, that affects your health. Uh, finances, if you're constantly worried about finances, um, if you're comparing yourself to others that have more or less, I mean, that affects your health. Cooking, are you taking the time to cook? We need to cook, guys, to make us healthy and our home. Our home should be our sanctuary. Okay, another thing we need to think about is the emotional aspects of food. I kind of touched upon that just a little bit ago. We were raised, at least I was, to celebrate we would have a party. or And that party would consist of everybody gathering with lots of food. Or even think of Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, how many times have I had to unbutton my pants just because I ate too much? Why? It's an emotional um, aspect of food. And when we start intuitively thinking about what we're eating, that will slow down. So when you sit with a group, you know, yeah, I can see that there's cake and ice cream and donuts and blah, 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 blah. But you can only, you could take a bite of everything. You don't have to eat a whole piece. And then you don't have to beat yourself up when you do it. That's intuitive thinking and eating. Start being kind to yourself, but you don't have to overindulge just because it's there. One of the things when you think about food and emotional eating, think about when you're stressed. Do you grab peanuts? popcorn, pretzels, um, to grab wine. Um, think about what you do when you're stressed. Think about what you do when you're bored. Think about what you do when you're tired. Start watching what you're grabbing for. Those are emotional triggers. And we want you to slow down on those. Okay, stress, oh my gosh. Perhaps the most understated of the simple rules for a healthy living in minimizing the stress. Okay. It's the one life hack that doesn't fit into a shopping cart and can't be measured in reps, miles, or hours. Stress is, however, the one silent danger that creates leaks in your health, allowing unhealthy habits to sneak in. Before you know it, you're going against all the rules for healthy living and the cortisol production is set off by stress. It drives fat straight to your belly cortisol. So what happens when we're stressed is we, we feel like we have to run from the tiger, right? And that's adrenaline and adrenaline pumps up all the blood flow, causes cortisol to be released and cortisol doesn't allow us to um, 
convert the sugars into necessary energy and it stores it as fat. Uh, we need to try and prioritize how to minimize stress. And I know, you know, everybody's like, Sue, well, I'm totally stressed out. What do you, what do you can't just flip a switch and turn stress off? No, but here's the deal. We need to find healthy ways to be able to manage stress. It's all about management and we can help reduce stress symptoms and impacts on our body by kind of playing with that autonomic nervous system I've talked about. Uh, okay, yeah, Sally says she takes hot baths to reduce her stress. Nice job, Sally, nice, nice, nice. Okay, another thing um, I wanna talk to you about is what you say to yourself. So if you're constantly saying you're stupid or you're ugly or you're fat or um, you're not worth it or you always screw things up or I'm poor, or I don't have enough money, that triggers the autonomic nervous system too. I'm sorry to tell you that. And we know what that does, fight, flight, or fear. We're not going to digest our food, increase heart rate. I don't need to keep going over it, but you guys understand that. Um, here's some things that you can do to stop these um, actions that are causing you, number one, to stimulate the autonomic nervous system, the fight, flight, or freeze. Start pushing back against them. So you can do a brain dump. Let's say you're just constantly thinking of all the things you have to do. So write it down, write it down. And we're like, our brain is like a computer and we have to defrag it. Okay. So we got to get rid of that stuff so we can have more information come in and feel freer. Okay. We can run more efficiently. You know, when you defrag your computer, it runs better. We need to do that. So brain dump. Journal. Journal. Sometimes if you just journal about how you retreated or what you're thinking and look back at that and kind of rephrase it so it's not so attacking to yourself, that will help you. Um, remind yourself that these thoughts are not truths. Now here's the funny thing. And then people, this is something I want everybody to realize. Your thoughts are not facts. Put that in your brain. Your thoughts are not facts. Your thoughts are something that you've seen from somewhere or you've been raised with, or, um, someone's put a, a, an example in your brain or they're not facts. Thoughts are not facts. And when you're letting your thoughts that aren't factual run your life, you're going to have more stress and you're going to have problems with your health. So when you start to figure this out, you go, well, what is that? Is that a fact? You know, I could sit here and say, oh my gosh, you know, uh, I wonder if my daughter made it to work. What if she hit traffic or what, you know, it's rained and, oh, I think it might be slippery. And, you know, my thoughts are going like this. And I'm thinking, fact is, I would have heard from her. Fact is, she always texts me when she gets there. Five minutes, I'll find out. That's a fact. So start thinking that way, okay? Um, let's see, here we go. What's your go-to method for fighting back against negative thoughts or anxiety? Um, yep, I, did. I just saw someone in the chat. They said that they journal. Yeah, I do too. I try and just do, and I call it the trash journal because there was some one time when I was trying to be such a perfectionist that I wouldn't write in the journal because I didn't want it to be ugly. <laughs> so I call it the trash journal now and I bend the pages and I use different ink and I make it ugly as I can because then I'll write in them. <laughs> and I'm trying to get rid of perfectionism. So that's another thing we'll talk about. Okay, um, another thing I do is there's an app out there, you guys, it's called I Am, and it has, it's like white writing in green little circle, and it's called I Am. It's free, and it just gives you motivational little pings during the day. I am strong, I am relaxed. Whatever you wanna put in there, you can put in there, and I love it, I love that. Okay, here we go, finding joy. How many of us run from task to task to task and we just get the day done and then we collapse on the couch? I used to do it for like 30 years and I'm not doing it anymore. We have to stop and enjoy our lives, okay? We can easily get caught up in the habit of filling our days with routines that are practical yet boring. We get so used to the way we move through the day and the world that we tend to miss out on the beautiful things that surround us. To help solve this, take time throughout your day to stop and observe your surroundings. Allow yourself to take a moment to feel grateful for the simple things like the birds chirping or that we have ovens or clothes washers. To cook our food, we don't have to go out and build a fire just to cook a soup or bagel or bum muffin and we don't have to spend hours on a washing board i mean think of how nice that luxury is to have a 
gosh, I got it. Yeah. Freedom. Okay. What is something incredible that you take for granted? Okay, that's huge, you guys, because when we start thinking of the things we're grateful for, it releases serotonin because we do this thing in our brain and it's searching for this free way to find happiness. And when we find happiness, serotonin is released. And serotonin is our good, our feel good hormone. And we need to release more of that. So when you're really frustrated or you're feeling like life is just, you gotta look for things that are good. And when you look for things that are good, your brain automatically reduces or um, releases serotonin. And guess what? Serotonin and cortisol don't get along. <laughs> Can't be in the same room together. So try that. Okay. Um, learn, you guys. This is another way to remain healthy. I don't know how many times I've seen elderly when I've watched them through physical therapy. And I'll say, well, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm just sitting there, you know. I'm Maybe I'm going to watch Jeopardy, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to watch my whatever show, or I have to learn. You have to learn something new because that stimulates the prefrontal cortex, and that prefrontal cortex is our planning and our, our super brain, and we don't want it to diminish. We don't want it to get dementia. You know, we want to learn something new. Uh, try learning a new language, and then reward yourself um, by a trip to that place. Um, Paint, learn how to paint, start gardening, start cycling, uh, golly, woodworking. I mean, there's things you can do, knitting. I mean, uh, learn kayaking or, or snowboarding or so, I don't know where you are in, in your, your lifestyle right now, but try and learn a new activity. It's so important. Uh, it leads to a sense of accomplishment and pride. And additionally, your brain chemistry changes and you could stave off dementia. Huge. According to an article in Psychologies Today, learning is a core need for psychological well-being. Learning can help us build confidence and a sense of self-efficiency. Join a learning group. That also helps with society or socialization. We need people. We're people people. Okay. There's Skillshare.com that gives you some things that you can learn. It gives you some examples. Um, but we really need to try and learn something as we get older or just to remain healthy. Um, sleep. Sleep is nature's nurse. It allows our body and brain to rest and heal. Um, uh, the amount uh, is different for each of us. The average person needs about seven to nine hours a night. Not only does getting enough sleep offer a host of benefits, not getting the sleep you need increases your risk of numerous health conditions. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Look at those bad boys. Getting the sleep you need offers protective benefits, allows your body to, and mind to reset. Okay, so some of the things that happens to us if we don't get sleep is we gain weight. We have inflammation. We um, have metabolic disease hit us. All of those things cause us, causes our body to suffer. We could uh, suffer. We have a higher risk of developing type two diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. Okay. Um, so how do we get some sleep? Set a nighttime ritual. I have a nighttime ritual. I have an alarm that goes off on my, my watch and it's at 7 p.m. I go in and wash my face, take a shower, take a bath. I get in my jammies. Um, I start turning the lights down if it's the winter. So I kind of calm myself. I do not, do not look at any more emails or social media or blue screen. No, 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 no. Um, I try a nighttime tea. I try and get as much sleep as I can because I just know it's how I get to heal. Okay, self-care. Okay, so self-care, everybody's like poo-poo self-care because they don't feel like they have time for it. And this is what I'm going to tell you about self-care. Um, I fly a lot. And one of the things that I recognize when I'm flying is that the flight attendant is stand up at the front and she'll say, okay, in the event that we have an emergency, oxygen masks will come down. You can tell I've flown a lot. And she says, we want you to put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then put it on your companion or your child. And, you know, as a mom, I thought, well, I'm going to put it on my kid first. I want to make sure my kid's okay. But then it hit me. By the time I put the oxygen mask on me, after I put the oxygen mask on the child, you know, opening the string and putting the string and fitting it, 
I'm probably going to pass out. So now my child has the oxygen mask on and I've passed out. And now my child's sitting there alone without me to take care of him. So self-care is taking care of you so that you have a body that you can enjoy in your later years, but also that you're around for your loved ones. People forget that. Okay, this is huge. Um, a few things that you can do for self-care. Establish a no list, okay? No checking emails at night. No attending gatherings with people who drain your energy. No going out on Saturday nights when you would rather stay in. No FOMO. No FOMO. Fear of missing out. That's a big one that causes us to overdo our boundaries. No looking at social media at night. No creating. Create, what I did is I created an automatic email response to emails that says after 5 p.m. I'll respond to you in the morning or on Monday. I kind of want that break. I remember when I was growing up, we didn't have, we weren't connected to the phone or the computer 24-7. Ugh. Okay, how do you partake in self-care? How could you do more of it? Okay, these are really cool. Stephen Covey has the four boxes that help to decide what is important or not important. Now, this is huge. Okay, box one is urgent and important. That's like deadlines. That's like, like filing the taxes on time. We should have a few taxes or a few um, tasks in this box. But if, if you live in this box and you are, you're a crisis manager, so if you always feel like you have this deadline, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. you're a crisis manager and you're problem-minded you're, you're problem people, so you're, you're always trying to fix a problem. This is very unhealthy. Box number two is important but not urgent. Important but not urgent. What box would that be? That's like your relationships, your long-term planning, activities that support your core values, exercise for health to prevent illness. This box will give you the most pleasure. This is the important box for longevity. Mm, think about that one. Not important but urgent. What does that mean? Not important but urgent. This is when someone else places a task on your plate. How many times has that happened to us? <sighs> and you're trying to be a people pleaser, and all of a sudden you're doing their stuff. It's not important to us, but they've made it urgent. Um, box two should be the main focus. Not important, okay, not important, not urgent is the fourth box. I'm so sorry. Not important, not urgent. This is the fourth box, and this is where you're looking at uh, distractions. Social media, TV, all of those things that just waste your time and you're not out doing. Okay. Box two should be your main focus. Think about this. If you get up in the morning and you race off to solve problems and you don't exercise, right? You get up in the morning, you run to work and you don't eat your breakfast. Okay. What are you setting yourself up for? Box number two is important, but not urgent. Yeah, it's not urgent to exercise, but it's important, right? For our longevity. It's, in, it's important to eat healthy, but it's not urgent. So we rarely fill box two, and that's the first box we should fill up with our time. Think about that one. Okay, here we go. Stay well. Staying well means going to the doctors, guys. Go to the doctor for your regular checkups. You need to have your blood work looked at. You need to have your glucose looked at. Um, you you want to find out what your cholesterol looks like, your blood pressure looks like. Go to the doctor and just Go there to stay well, not go when you're sick. Women should be screened for cervical and breast abnormalities, while men should have their prostate and colon, and we should also have our colons looked at. Um, don't think of your doctor as a place to go when you're sick. Instead, see your doctor as a place to remain well. Can't say that enough. Okay. Home. Oh, I'm gonna go back just one step. Um, going to the doctor is important, but also going to the dentist is important. The dentist may be your first line of defense. Did you guys know that? Your mouth is a window into what is going on in the rest of your body, often serving as a valuable vantage point for detecting early signs and symptoms of disease, such as diabetes. If we have gums that aren't healing, that's a sign that we're not healing or that we're having a hard time with our healing or our, our body's ability to heal. Uh, diabetic conditions, we can't heal. They're slow to heal. Um, your dental x-rays can si show signs of bone loss. 
that might be missed in me medical routine um, evaluations. Our mouths are susceptible to infection when not cared for correctly. Well, these may escalate to or be associated with poorly controlled diabetes or cardiovascular disease. Okay, your home. You may be wondering how decluttering can have any, any healthy benefits with your home, but it does. Some psychologists are starting to recognize that clutter uh, can have a detrimental effect on your mental and physical health. Clutter can lead to sensory overload for an already taxed brain. Get that one. Okay. We need to know where our keys are in the morning so we can go to work. If it's full of clutter, you can't find your keys. Okay. How many times have you looked for your purse and you can't find it? I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, a clean space is more conducive to a product, productivity and creativity. Getting rid of the things that don't need you don't need offers a variety of benefits. Not only will you feel lighter and more detached, it will help you be less disorganized. Staying motivated, I know it's hard to stay motivated, but it's an important step in working toward reaching your goals. To help keep your mind moving past, positively. Maybe a creative vision board. I like to look at pictures. I look at a picture of what life I want. It's not a skinny thing or it's not that it's, it's a picture of an activity. It's usually an action shot of someone doing something. Um, when I was really working hard with my children, one of the pictures I had was um, a woman, I think it was Lauren Bacall, and she was in a fly fishing outfit and she was fly fishing. And I said to myself, I'm going to be that woman when I turn 60 or whatever. She was older at the time. I want to be that woman. You know, I want to be able to stand up against the current with my big monkey waiter boots on and have that cute little hat on with the flies in it and fly fish. And sure as heck, I learned. I took a fly fishing class and I had a lot of fun. And so what I'm saying is create a vision that you're trying to go to. It could be hiking up a mountain. It could be, you know, dancing with your grandchildren. It could be something but have a vision for it. Okay. Okay. So, um, one of the things that I wanted to share with you is this webinar is just the beginning of many. Here's the lineup. Get your calendar out, get a little piece of paper. Cause here it is in July. We will be figuring out how to eat for health. We're going to feed the liver, the gut metabolize or make sure that we're processing sugar correctly by feeding our body correctly. In August, move the body, keep it moving, how to increase muscle strength, flexibility, balance, cardio health, and have it be fun. September, how do I stop all the stress? October, school is back on. I need to turn my house into a fast food restaurant. November, I just want to sleep. December, cooking. Holidays doesn't need to be terrible. Cooking, cooking, cooking for the holidays and entertaining doesn't have to be stressful and it does not have to make you fat. January, the big detox. Everybody likes to detox in January. Detox is going to be detoxing the pantry, detoxing the refrigerator, detoxing our house, detoxing friends that aren't serving us, detoxing activities that aren't serving us. February is my home is my sanctuary. Okie dokie dokie do. Where are we here? Uh, what is an image that inspires you to make healthy choices? Kind of went over this already. So um, last but not least, detox. One of the things that I want you to think about is when you want to detox, um, we're going to detox not just food, not the body. We're going to detox people, activities. We're going to get our calendar out and it's going to be our shield. Okay, so let's see. I know I've told you a lot. Uh, let's just have a recap right here. I, sh I shared with you to set your purpose, practice mindfulness, avoid living on autopilot, start, start journaling, expand your knowledge by learning something new, connect your mind, body, and soul, get fit, avoid sitting for long periods of time, get more sleep, stay hydrated, eat more plant-based foods, keep up with the wellness business, see your dentist, declutter your space, Detox what is not serving you. Now, so if you want to find out more, I do have a signature program that's based off my book. And that book is about, yeah, my clothes fit again, but it's about unweighting yourself of all of the things that we do in our life that um, are, are causing us to be unhealthy. And for women, it's pretty cool. It's a great book. Even if you're not overweight, it's a great book just to unweight what we're doing, like life, how busy we are, and how to 
know how to move your body to reduce trauma, um, know how to stimulate your vagus nerve to um, cause us to relax more and stimulate the rest and digest. It's a great book. But anyways, I also have a signature program, so you guys can check that out. I think the links are below. And I have to say this was awesome, and I think you guys are wonderful, and thank you for being here. I hope I haven't taken up too much time, but I hope that the time you spent with me was well received and beneficial. Okay, you guys, hugs to all. Love you all. Thanks for being here.